Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the meeting of the executive. My, <coughs> my first one that I'm chairing. So, um, first item on the agenda is the minutes, pages one to fifteen. <coughs> Can I? Uh, is there any comments? <coughs> I'm not quite sure whether it's. Oh, yeah. um, the, uh, I, I asked a question during the work, working regeneration um, item, which Anthony answered, about making sure that um, the regeneration and that particular purchase was not a burden on the taxpayers across the whole of the borough. And I got an answer which said, on the contrary, it won't be. And I couldn't find that anywhere in the minute, so I reported that minute. Uh, thank you. Does that mean that's still signed these? And... Yeah. Okay. So if we're all in agreement, <coughs> can you show your agreement for the minutes with that amendment? <coughs> Moving on to uh, the next item, nine. Any apologies? Uh, apologies. <coughs> Any declarations of interest? No. So therefore we move on to uh, the public <coughs> question time and 11.1, uh, I understand uh, Mrs Hurd isn't here but there is a substitute. Would you like to ask your question? It's just switched on already. Yes. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you probably noticed that I'm not Mrs Hurd. Um, my name is Ray Sharp and I've come here to pose um, <coughs> that Jan has sent in, I do have a supplementary question. Um, I just should, should just qualify that the Rights Away Improvement Plan Group, this is the Working Rights Away Improvement um, Working Group, which is uh, a subgroup of the Mid and West Parks Local Access Forum. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right, the Rights Away Improvement Plan Group would like to ensure that sufficient funding is in place for junctions which will intersect the Arborfield Reef Road and improved cycle tracks, question routes and for walkers. In the past, funding has been sought from outside bodies such as Sustrans, so please can Woken Borough Council tell us what funding is being put into place to ensure that the relief road is suitable for vulnerable users and those who need to cross it. Uh, thank you for your, the question. Um, in actual fact, rights of way now is my colleague, uh, Councillor Ross, so I'll pass it over to him to answer the question. Thank you, Chairman. Welcome as Chairman. And thank you, Ray, for the question. Um, the Council is committed to improving the opportunities for people to travel on foot and cycle, and to this end has been actively seeking funding to improve <coughs> pedestrian and cyclist infrastructure across the borough. It's been successful in securing local sustainable transport fund money for improved cycle facilities on the 329 Reading Road, the Way, and will continue to bid for funding where available. Coming to your part, the Upfield Cross Relief Road, will have a <coughs> continuous footway and off-road cycle path along the highway for its full route length. The project will also look to provide appropriate onward pedestrian and cyclist routes at Reading Road, Swallowfield Road and Eversley Road, Langley Common Road, tying into existing provisions, mainly east of the Relief Road. The cost of such provision will be included as part of the total scheme cost. The road itself will affect two existing rights of way and the design will ensure the impact on these routes is minimised. This will include providing appropriate and safe crossing facilities to a standard appropriate for the existing users of those paths. As the design is developed, we'll be coming back to the local forum to receive input from all stakeholders. And we hope the rights of way improvement plan group plays an active role in this process. I understand you have a supplementary? Yes. <coughs> Yeah, thank you for that, Councillor Ross. Um, uh, just a, a few se sentences preamble before I have my question. Uh, we are concerned that the focus appears to be on one side of the road for cyclists and pedestrians on the proposed Arborfield Relief Road. The contraflow effect is not desirable and is contrary to advice given in guidance notes LTN 208 and LTN 1 oblique 12 from the Department for Transport. I acknowledge that Woken Borough Council has its own cycling infrastructure style guide but my supplementary question is, 
Woken and Borough Council has advised <coughs> our forums that the housing in the SDOs is to satisfy needs for the south of England. So we believe the authority should be seeking funding from regional or central government to offset the cost of getting the relief road as safe as possible. <coughs> is the authority doing this? We will be seeking funding uh, in any opportunities, um, whether specifically for this route, but uh, as I've said in, in, in my answer, we've already secured funding <coughs> recently, both on the A329 and on the Lower Early Way, and we'll continue to look for such sources of funding. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next uh, public question, which is uh, uh, EP2, <coughs> In our, our parlance. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, questioner is uh, yet again unable to be here, Mrs. Purchase, so we'll send a full uh, response by uh, letter. So, item moving on to item 12, member question time. Uh, Beth, I think you've got a question. I <coughs> have In July last year, the executive voted through cuts to youth services and children's centres, which caused concern to Lib Dem councillors, amongst others. Part of the decision was that an updated report on a new model of youth service and children's provision would be submitted to the executive in March 2014. This did not happen. When can we expect to see the report come to the executive? Thank you, Councillor Rodin, for your question. Following <coughs> the implementation of the Children's Centres and Youth Service Review recommendations that came into force from September 2013 onwards, an officer and cross-party member steering group was formed. This group has met to review the progress and discuss and influence the development of the new models of delivery. <coughs> I'm pleased to report that whilst it is still very early days, services are developing well. Feedback from service users is good, and partnership agencies have responded positively to the service changes. At the meeting of the member steering group on the 26th of February 2014, where there was cross-party re representation, officers and members discussed reports on the youth services, children's centres, and the recommendation that a report should be brought to the executive in March. It was agreed by all group members that the report for the executive would be postponed until after May 2014 to allow time to collate quantitative data. The scheduled members steering group meeting for April 2014 was cancelled due to both Conservative and Lib Dem group members being unavailable. I apologise that this agreed postponement was not communicated to all members. The report is tabled to come to the September executive and Democratic Services have got this tabled in the next executive forward plan which will be published shortly. Officers are currently working up the relevant data to give a thorough insight into the progress of the services in question, and this will be reviewed at the next member steering group, which is planned for July, prior to presentation to the executive in September. I'm sure you have a supplementary. <coughs> right, you are. <laughs> um, in, as part of that report, Charlotte, I'd like to see the effect on other services. And CAMs are reporting they've been affected by the cuts and are seeing more referrals. ARC certainly are having to put on additional sessions. Please, can that report, when it comes to executive in September, reflect and comment on that? Thank you, Councillor Rowland. Um, I will certainly ask officers to do that. Um, currently, CAMs uh, is being looked at as one of the top priorities for the health and wellbeing strategy going forward for the next uh, three years. That uh, ends the member question time. We we'll move into the main body of the executive meeting, matters for consideration. We start off on page 13, uh, page 16, item 13. Do you have any more returns? Thank you, Keith. Yes, um, the uh, outturn for last year, as I think you can see from the papers, we did I, I, we did well as usual. Um, but um, and because of the flooding and the fact that we had a, a slight underspend, we were able to make a contribution to uh, potholes at all. Um, so I'm pleased that we were able to do that. And you can see on page 21 that the 
uh, general fund balance is slightly over 8.5, nearly 8.7 million. So um, a good uh, amount of reserves for eventualities. Um, and um, <coughs> there was hope we won't have to raise them too much. Uh, the revenue support grant on the housing revenue account on page 22 uh, shows some healthy balances at the end of March. <coughs> and looking at our um, investments on page 25, we have some 60 million, um, a lot of which has been uh, accrued for from either 106 or from uh, money from the schools for work on schools this, this current year. So not an excuse to spend too much money, but uh, a good um, situation to be in. And you can see the um, Fitch ratings and the interest rates of each of the investments. Any questions on the revenue outcome? Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a question for you, um, Chair. I was just wondering, um, we have a sum of £500,000, which was a um, supplementary estimate to help householders and businesses affected by the inclement um, weather, um, particularly also with um, potholes. I was just wondering, we've recently received two grants from central government, and I was just wondering, does that mean then that this money, £500,000, will then go back into reserves, or is that on top of the, the, the two grants that we've received? Uh, that will continue to be spent as originally planned, so therefore it's not going back into general debt. Okay. Any other uh, questions? For, okay, I'll put it to the vote. All those in the Can I just make a comment? Okay. That I'd already asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Moving on to the next item, item 14, on page 26. It's Anthony again. Thank you. This is our capital outturn <coughs> report. Um, capital budget, as members are aware, has been growing significantly over recent years and will continue, particularly with uh, the amount of capital funds, capital work to be done in the SDLs, will also continue. Um, <coughs> you can see on page uh, 27 uh, the, um, uh, how the 44 million that we were planning to spend has broken down, and obviously, nearly 22 million of that relates to schools. Um, in, <coughs> you can see, I think, on um, page, page 29, you can see 47 million that we approved in 13 14, uh, the 34 million that we brought forward, uh, which effectively gives us a total uh, budget of something like that, nearly 86 million pounds, which is significant. Uh, we're carrying forward about 41 million on page 30. Uh, and you can see how that uh, breaks down across the services. Um, I can take any questions. Chairman. Do we have any questions for Anthony? We can go straight for that. Uh, all those in favour of Anthony's report? That's uh, unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, item 15 <coughs> on, on page 35. That's the next item. Uh, one for you, I guess. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, the Working and Biodiversity Action Plan 2012 to 2024. <coughs> um, there's a report here, and I think the whole thing is very timely as we work with developers on our SDLs. Um, executive approved this to go out to consultation. <coughs> we had a formal six week public consultation from the 6th of March to the 17th of April. <coughs> Um, rather disappointing uh, responses, but we did get one from the Berkshire uh, Local Nature Partner <coughs> and three others. N nothing fundamental came back, but it was very helpful, and amendments were incorporated into the plan. The plan itself will assist us in defending and hopefully enhancing our natural environment and making opportunities as we develop our SDLs. Uh, the recommendation is that we adopt this plan as council policy. So. Any any questions for Angus? We'll move straight to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you very much. It's unanimous. <coughs> Item 16, page 40. Uh, working older people 
closing the strategy for the team. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, well, I can't take the credit for this one, although I wish I could give us a brilliant report. All the hard work was undertaken by my erstwhile well colleague in the audience, uh, Councillor Bob White and uh, Stuart, and, uh, and um, it's a, a great report. I think it's a good news story. What it does allow us to do is to actually have a specific uh, strategy for older people's housing. Um, I don't really have a great deal more to add than that, other than um, if you look at what we did on fosters when we actually uh, very reluctantly close fosters. We're actually now sort of following forward with our commitment to uh, rebuild on that site for extra care housing, and that's just one aspect of what we're going to do in the future. But happy to take any questions. Uh, just before I take questions, uh, I'd like to make a comment that uh, this was a direct output <coughs> of uh, our current deputy um, uh, system, uh, the deputy for all the power people's housing strategy, and so. Uh, um, it's a very positive output for that action, <coughs> the action that uh, my predecessor did. So, uh, hands up for Rob. Not really a question, it's, um, I guess, agreeing with what the earlier speakers have said, that uh, I found it actually a very interesting paper um, uh, to read, and it not only alludes to the excellent work that's been undertaken by both officers and indeed a couple of members that have already been mentioned and I'd like to be associated with that. Um, so I think it's, a, it's an excellent piece of work. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, um, it's really about page 41, top third, fourth line down actually, <coughs> page 41, where it says, we intend to meet the needs projected above by a variety of methods to ensure we meet the needs of those people who we have a duty to fund. And I was interested in who we do have a duty to fund, um, as opposed to those that we do not. So that would be my question. Um, I also think on page, that's a two-parter, on page 45 under 1.25, um, that paragraph there, um, in fact the whole page is a very good summary of that, Potential Act, which is <coughs> which will follow this uh, autumn, I think. Um, 1.25 lays out potential cost, um, and um, I'm just wondering: Are we expected to fund that completely, or will there be um, some costing, some support from the government of, um, to help us fund what could be some quite serious implications? Um, for um, <coughs> some of the people impacted by this act. So it's a two-parter, if, if I may. OK, thanks very much for your question, Rob. Um, I'll take the first one first. Um, who are we required to fund? We have a position where we look at people needing critical needs that fall within our criteria. So that would be the broad definition of who we would fund to start with. So um, they have to be critical? Yes. Yeah, so it, it, is in, it is in critical need. Um, obviously, we are you know, the lowest funded authority. I know David Lee's not here, but he always wants me to get that in. But we are the worst funded authority. So um, we, we are just on, on critical need, and that's why we're making every effort to have extra care housing, because that gives us more opportunity to do more with less, so to speak. Um, your second part of the question with regard to the deal knots and the care bill. Um, yeah. As with most government legislation, it's never quite as clear as we always want it to be, and we're still working through some of the details. Um, you can read it in a number of different ways. Are we responsible for actually coming up with some additional funding? Almost certainly, and the government won't be funding everything, but until we actually get clarity on that, it's very difficult to say with any certainty. Can, can I assume that the final detail of it? And can I assume we're monitoring that very, very carefully? Because you would agree with me, I think, that the, the potential cost is, is quite enormous. Absolutely, a huge amount of work is being done by Stuart and his team. Um, we only had a, uh, an off-site away day um, last week to look at that, amongst other things. So, yeah, a huge amount of work is being done. We're also working with other councils through the health and wellbeing strategy to look at what they're doing so we can have a, a joined-up strategy. Okay. Anthony? Thank you. Yes, um, really following on from the comments that um, Rob made, um, that 
this is obviously an important plank in our longer term planning, our need to keep our costs down, to bend the cost curve uh, down as uh, more people become uh, older, and particularly older, over 85, when they do tend to need our services more. Um, <clears throat> the, the issue around the care bill, when has the government ever fully funded anything, other than, unless it's something we didn't want and didn't need, I think. Um, that really um, helps. But um, I think, so I'm assuming that yes, we will have to fund <coughs> quite a bit. I think the, the worrying piece is that um, the threshold may go down and that will mean that there will be people who we don't currently um, provide services to who will come within our net, so that could actually be a growth item on its own. So, um, yes, it, it is an area, um, um, Rob asked, are we keeping an eye on it? Yes, I am keeping an eye on it, as is the finance team, so you know, we are concerned about this, but I think this is a good report and I think it will um, play its role in managing our finances a long term. I just <coughs> because the care bill and the clarity <coughs> surrounding the care bill isn't particularly clear at the moment, we are working up a number of different scenarios about well if this happens, how would we fund this? But I think the report for old people's housing goes a long way further than we've ever had before to actually sort of clarify what it is we do today and what we think is going to happen in the two, three, five, <coughs> ten years hence. Uh, John? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to welcome you to your first meeting. Um, this is an excellent piece of work. I can only reiterate, and along with the housing homeless strategy and the emerging young people strategy, it will mean that we, the three of them will form a, quite an excellent document, which will be the Council's overall housing strategy. So I really do commend this to everybody. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> I again reiterate the support that uh, my colleagues have given to this paper, the work that's gone into it, and, and the benefits <coughs> which will accrue. I just want to make one comment that um, looking at page 49 and 50, um, definitely something that I would tear out from my agenda and keep as a record of the different types of housing, which I've always found very complicated <laughs> and confusing. Um, I hope not for my own personal use, but definitely for the use within, within the boards. Uh, so uh, I do find that a very useful addition here, yeah. and I do uh, support the, the uh, strategy. Any more questions? Thank you, Chair. Um, just also to follow on, uh, again, um, my thanks to uh, Councillor Wyatt for all of his hard work and, and other colleagues. Um, but also just to comment, I just wanted to ask really, how will this influence conversations going forward with developers um, so that uh, we get the right housing that we need, the extra care, um, rather than the other, how many other types of um, variations of um, housing for people that um, doesn't provide the kind of um, care that um, our older people in, in this borough need? I mean, put simply, it allows us to brief our colleagues in planning so they will have a much earlier start when they sit down with developers to actually influence what it is we want, where we want it, and what we don't want. And only today I had a conversation with <coughs> a developer who, for some reason, wanted, wanted to build a care home in an area that we don't need and there is an abundance of care homes, but hadn't even thought of extra care. So it allows planning to actually have those conversations much earlier and hopefully actually stop areas that we don't want, like sort of some of the care homes where we've got numerous others, and actually look at alternatives. So this will form the bedrock of then allowing them to plan and do that. Uh, John, do you want to add to that from your perspective? Yeah, I, obviously, um, we can't actually stop anybody building care homes if they need the planning. But uh, I do think Julian's right that uh, we will work with developers and, and also work with them along with 106 or still and try and encourage them to, to build extra care rather than the other type of housing which ends up costing us money. Any other questions? We'll move to the vote. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I, I just say one other thing? I just want to put on record my thanks not only to Bob but also to uh, Louise Connolly for the excellent work that both of you have done on this strategy. Thank you very much, Matt. All those in favour of the report? That's unanimous. Let's move on, item 17, page 58, 
improving resident and customer service strategy. It's uh, Pauline. Thank you, Keith, and uh, welcome as well. Um, I'd, I'd like to um, propose the adoption of this strategy and also for you to note that we intend to purchase some IT as, as, a, as part of the backbone towards delivering it. Um, the customer service strategy is very, very important to this council, I think. It will transform the way residents um, receive our services, and I think we really need to continue on a continuous improvement cycle to, to continue to deliver better and better services <coughs> with less and less money. The, um, the, the, the key to this is not only the IT, but also end-to-end um, -end processes. So we eliminate rework, we eliminate chasing phone calls for people who don't know what's going on with their query, and we allow them access to their request at any point in the, in the transaction between the first request and the completion of that request. I think there's a phenomenal amount of efficiency we can drive through this. Um, there's a pretty good description of the programme as a whole on page 63, um, which says basically resolve each request as far up the life cycle as you can. We're not intending to take away choice for residents, so we would still, we're not going to force everybody down the IT route. We recognise, um, rather like the question <coughs> from the uh, resident earlier, we recognise different needs and people need to be able to phone us, they need to be able to come and see us, but they also can access services online and a lot of people want to see the progress of their services outside the times that the council is necessarily operating. So I think this really gives us a great opportunity to improve our service and to make it more efficient. And I would like your support. Uh, thank you, Pauline. Before I throw it open to questions, um, uh, one thing I would like to see is a um, when we get it up and running, or just before, is somehow a, a brief document or whatever for residents who will which document what's the difference. This is how it's going to be better for you, and it's a critical piece uh, so people understand why this is going in. Uh, Charlotte, I saw your hand up first. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is, is um, with the new rollout of the IT, um, when will our customers start to feel the difference when they when they bring in from start to finish? So I said this, this isn't very much, very definitely is not just about IT. No. We need to look at end-to-end -end processes to make sure that they are aligned and that we have proper interfaces between all the bits of the council that provide parts of the service if you've got a complex request. We're already starting to get some quick wins. One of the things I was very keen on in this programme is, it's a five-year programme, but I like, want to get some benefits as quickly as possible. We've started to do some changes to the internet already, which have started to improve the way people can find stuff, as you've seen by the recent grass cutting um, item, and to try and drive um, people's queries onto the internet rather than them ringing up asking uh, questions that are, you know, that basically can be answered through the internet where they've got access to it. So there are some quick hit, <coughs> quick wins. We're also looking at um, some changes to the telephone system, which will help residents ring back if they've been wrong by, a, by an officer and have missed the call. So there's lots of things going on in advance, um, and I, I'll provide a, a complete plan of the whole lot when we get to the point where we've actually got a five-year rollout. But please be assured there are going to be some benefits immediately, and there have already been some. Thank you, Pauline. I have one change I would love to on the telephone. So can we get rid of that music? <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. We ought to change it on a regular basis once a year or something. Philip. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've been um, associated with this recently, this programme, and I was given the opportunity to see what was proposed. And with my background in service management, it, it was quite interesting to see the way Mike Abyss and, and the team have approached this and Pauline. And I'm very impressed. I think if it goes through as proposed, it will be a major step forward for this council. So I think it's careful to you for doing that. Uh, Angus? <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I, I think uh, th there's an awful lot of benefit that can come from this if, if we get all the, the routing right. Uh, for instance, already we're seeing benefits of trying to intercept calls that have been going direct to professionals on a desk mm -hmm. and taking up their time in, in answering relatively routine questions rather than getting on with the professional work. 
But <clears throat> my question here is, in, in looking at the principles of this, something I've always had in my mind, and I know I've discussed it with, with Pauline, is, is the principle of one-stop shop. Uh, and having, for instance, we, we, we do it when you die, we should also have it when somebody comes to uh, the borough. And, and I would hope this is built into the whole principle of this, not only <coughs> the let's say a new resident comes, they get told all the electoral stuff, the waste stuff, the whatever it might be. But also, if they ask one question, it might almost prompt us to say, oh, and by the way, something else. But is that principle built into this? I think, I think one of the key principles is actually looking at services from the resident's point of view rather than from the point of view of the person that's delivering. So quite often you get a complicated query. Um, we need to encourage people through training and through education to look behind the query and actually try and understand what the person's asking for rather than what they might be explicitly saying and also to think of things from their point of view or the resident's point of view rather than from the service provider's point of view and to hide the mechanics of how the service is provided from the resident and make sure the resident gets um, an answer which reflects their requirement <coughs> rather than how we're going to deliver it so you're absolutely right we need to do that and we also need to be clear as Keith said with people how, how this is going to work for them and how this is going to be better for them. So it needs quite a lot of communication out to the, out to the residents as well. I'm really hoping, um, in previous experience of implementing something like this elsewhere, that it's so intuitive that we don't need to spend a lot of time educating people. The whole point is, if it's intuitive and simple, they should be able to access it easily. They don't, the whole point is protecting people from our internal workings so they don't have to know that Peter Bauer stocks an absolute wizard of bins or whatever it is. <laughs> they can, they're protected from the internal organisation and <coughs> the internal processes of the council. Uh, any other questions? Uh, John? Y yes, Chairman, it's not a direct question, but as a service organisation, is there any way we can look at getting rid of the withheld number? I mean, I have numerous calls uh, every day and they don't leave messages and <coughs> I have to guess who's ringing me. That's what I was referring to earlier. We've, we've got a little bit of a problem at the moment because we share a phone number with some bits of Optimus right. and there's some, I won't go into technicalities, but some bit deep in the, the version of the IT um, telecoms infrastructure that we use that makes getting rid of core ID um, withheld a bit difficult at the moment. We've got to do some upgrades to the telecoms infrastructure to actually do that. We're using a a version of something that doesn't make that easy with the fact we share a phone number with Optimus, but we're working on it. Thank you. So there's no other comments, we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? <coughs> so you now us again. <laughs> Moving on to item 18, Trading Standards Share Service Agreement, extension page 73. Pauline again. Thank you, Keith. This is um, uh, <coughs> probably quite a brief item. The objective here is to um, bring all the shared services that we have with West Berkshire around trading standards and environmental health to a common end date as far as the contracts are concerned. Because we believe if we then choose to renegotiate and retender those contracts, we'll be able to get some more significant savings by bringing those together, particularly in the IT area. So it makes sense to bring them both together and retender it as one. Thing, and if we choose to renew it, it will give us some better benefits. Uh, any questions, or can we go straight to the vote? Can I just ask one question? It's for Anthony, actually. Mm -hmm. Anthony, when the trading standards are uh, all the proceeds of crime, we've been awarded £40,000, I think, for one. Does that go back to the department, uh, such as planning, where it's initiated from? Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Can you answer? Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Comes into central funds. That's right. Yeah. At least we know. <laughs> that, that's the little that's left after the government's taken their <coughs> big, big cut, unfortunately. Um, right, so um, trading standards um, can go to the vote. All those in favour? And then we'll call in again. Uh, item 19 shared internal audit services. Again, um, this is a, a proposal to move to a shared service for internal audit. There are several benefits to this, um, as you can see by the paper. We will have greater resilience and the ability to share skills across um, the two authorities involved. We'll be able to improve the opportunities and skills development for the auditors. 
um, and we'll be able to improve our recruitment and retention by actually giving people more variety of work. And the final benefit of that is that um, we will um, reduce our costs as well. There's some amalgamation of costs going on. There's a small cost saving. Thank you, Chairman. Um, with my previous hat on as Chairman of Audits, I do fully support this. I think we have an excellent business assurance team and investigations team that have already proven on many occasions over the last few years uh, how effective they can be in supporting other authorities. And I think by bringing this together, it will give us other opportunities to develop and expand that uh, operation. So well done. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to check, are we, am I correct in thinking that sometimes we sell our services already um, externally to um, town and parish councils? Yeah. And if so, will we still be able to continue to do that um, if, if oh, we've traded services um, with, with the service merger? Sorry. I'm sure. uh, yes, we do, and yes, we will. Thank you. Anthony? Um, <coughs> I, I welcome the principle. My only comment was on page 80 that the savings were only 20,000 a year, and I was hoping for more. Nothing <laughs> 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 ever changes, does it? Don't agree. Let's start here. Uh, Rob. Well, I'll come back for more next. Um, right, uh, two or three quickies. Um, it's a good idea, uh, and, and makes perfect sense. Where will it be based? Will it be based here or Windsor or both? <coughs> um, if, it, if if it's in different places, um, will it have one overall manager? Um, and is the saving, I'm back on an anti pollard job now, is the saving the FTE, which we have vacancy at the moment, we have one vacancy, it's in the papers, and is that the saving? Um, and, and will there be any redundancies? I don't believe there's any redundancies. The service will be centred here, but obviously with auditors, they do move around the place to actually audit. They, you can't audit remotely very easily. You've got to look deep into the whites of the eyes of the person you're auditing. Um, the the savings, they're, they're, we're not planning any redundancies. Sorry, what was the other question? Well, in, in the paper, in the fact that you've got one vacancy here which saves around 40k, and you <coughs> the says the savings are 20k, so I'm wondering how you were going to square that off there. We've already had the saving of the the vacancy in the budget already, so we can't double count. So the 20,000 in 20, addition to the double count. Are there any other questions? Otherwise, we move to the vote. All those in favour of the report? Unanimous again. <coughs> Moving on to the next item 20. Um, it does have a part to remind you, but I'm not sure whether we need to go into that. Um, Acquisition of property to enable the North Working District of the Road. I should do that. Um, I'm, I'm down as the lead member on this because I'm still carrying on doing <coughs> highways at least until the end of July. Um, the North Working and Distributor Road, uh, in order for it to go through, uh, basically has to go through where Pebblestone Cottage is. It's been known for probably two years, three years and uh, we've had extensive discussions with the owner, um, or owners, should I say, very, very successfully. So what this paper here is um, uh, requesting authorization of that acquisition. I believe the owners have actually already moved out from what I read in one of the newspapers. Um, so uh, I think everything is, uh, it seems quite a reasonable price. Anthony, do you want to say something on top of that? Um. I just think it's it's a necessity, you know, the, I, I, I put the North Working Relief Road in the local transport plan too, so, you know, it's, it's coming, coming on the horizon, and yes, it has to be done, and it has to go through this site, so we we'll have to buy it, I'm sorry, yeah, but that's the way it is, and um, fully support it. Okay, so, bear in mind that uh, there is a part two, so be careful with any questions you want to ask. Is there any, uh, anybody have any questions? Well, if we go straight to the vote. All those in favour of the acquisition? That's unanimous. Um, the last item is a part two item. Uh, um, it's really for information. I don't know whether uh, my fellow executive members want to discuss that. 
So that really is the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. Chairman, the actual recommendation is in part one. Is it? Oh, sorry. No, I apologise. I was going to say so, so good. So um, the recommendations there is to is to note. Oh, there is the formation of the silk court. The silk management company. Management company. Um, We've got to approve that, I think. Right. Um, <coughs> do we need any questions or debate on that? Yeah, You've got to do it. Okay. Can I uh, see a show of hands? <coughs> yes, unanimous. No, I declare the meeting closed. Can I can I ask um, exec members just to stay by?